I'm going to digitize a retro patio rocking chair, 1978 vintage. I'm using John Walsh's 2013 Logic Trace CNC DXF program. Here I'm showing the drawing board with the diagram taped down. This is a close-up shot showing the one inch grid pattern. We start off by defining our drawing boundary by touching the four corners of the diagram. I move the diagram around on the drawing board just so I feel comfortable tracing it out. I find the cordless pen really gives me flexibility. I'm able to get into all the little nooks and crooks. As I've shown there, I like the combination setting. It's lines, arcs, and tracing. Good selection. This diagram has lots of lines, lots of curves. I trace out each section, label it, and save it. There's five parts to this chair that have to be drawn. Once I have all the parts drawn, I'll put it into the editing program and have a look at the size and compare it to a known measurement and increase the diagram size so it matches the print exactly. The print did give some measurements. Here I'm showing small red arrows and because the pen doesn't have a trace or a mark, I always like to leave a mark where I start and where I finish. The finish is important because the computer fills in that spot, so I like to stay away about a half an inch, because if you don't, you're going to end up with cross vectors, and then you have to edit that and cut those vectors out. Just an extra step that I feel I can save myself. Using the board frequently, you end up having little shortcuts that you can do. I like to save editing. It takes time to edit. The seat trace is going to help me out because the seat is 25 and a quarter by 22 inches on the diagram. So that I'll be able to adjust my diagram to match that seat exactly. On the straight lines, it's really easy because you just touch every so often on the line and the, the program just fills it in. If you notice that back section with all the holes, that section is actually doubly thick. There's an inside section where all the dowels attach to. I didn't draw that twice, I just drew it once and then I edited it to make the second piece so therefore I'll get a perfect match. The dowel holes won't show on the outside of the chair. I'll edit those out before I do the final cut. When I loaded the file into the node editor, I increased the file by 230% and I got that percentage by just trial and error, looking at some known measurement and increasing my diagram. I started off about 210, worked my way up to 230 and it was right on. If the diagram has been drawn with some accuracy, once you digitize it, It'll maintain that accuracy and you can increase it and the whole diagram will match up. In fact, I could take this chair and decrease it and make a chair about 7 inches high and it would be an exact 
duplicate of the large chair but scaled right down to 7 inches. Talk about a real McCoy model. You use the circle command to do the holes and when the computer echoes back the value you correct that value to the correct diameter which was 0 0.50 for a one inch dowel. The circle command only needs to have three spots touched on that hole and it'll come back and ask for the diameter. That's an accuracy I like because all the holes are one inch dowel. We're pretty well all finished up here. Just got the armrest to do and all the raw files are done and we'll be taking a look at those raw files with a node editor Vectric Aspire I'll also be using Aspire 8.5 to create my toolpath for each part to be cut out. Here I'm checking some of the values using a measurement stick in the program and I'm just going around and checking some of those tracings I've done to make sure they're within the spec I want. Here I'm going to edit some of the nodes. I'm going to try and make some of the round parts rounder and some of the flat parts flatter. And if I don't like what I've done, I just take the scissors and actually cut the vector and then redo it. When I finish editing, I always check for open vectors. These CNC machines do not like open vectors or cross vectors. You can see here where I kind of messed up the vector there, so I just cut it out and then I just added on to it or welded it back together. And I also took that little bend out to make it uh, rounder. Again, I'm checking measurements, making sure that I'm happy with the diagram before I do the final save. Here I'm adjusting the background measurements so then I can take a look at the 4x8 sheet and put my parts on that 4x8 sheet and get the best cut. This chair is going to take a full 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. I'm going to use oak veneer plywood. Now we're all set to create the tool pads which includes the tabs to keep the pieces in place after they're cut out. I've got all the parts nested on a 4x8 sheet and this is the toolpath list I'll be following. Shown here is the 4x8 sheet of plywood screwed down to the CNC table. I'm using a quarter inch end mill set up at 60 inches per minute at 0.79 deep, 4 passes. All the pieces stayed in pretty good with the tabbing. I used a three-dimensional tabbing, 0.25 by 
I loaded each file and cut each file separately. I prefer to do each piece. That way, if there's a mistake, I can correct it. And there was a mistake. On one of the back pieces where the dowels connect, instead of an outside cut, I did an inside cut and the part was too small. It took about two hours to do the whole cut. It took a bit of time to set it up, a bit of time to clean up. This is the chair assembled. Uh, no finish yet, just sanded. Here it's got one coat of finish. These are the pictures of the finished chair. I even put a cushion on it to show it off. I'm happy with the chair and it rocks quite nicely. Now having all the DXF files it would be a snap to make another.